friends, and now the podcast where we take Chronically Online to a whole new level. And I have a very special guest today. Hi, Andy. Hi, Ari. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you don't know me, I'm Ariana Moyer. I am on Erie Digital News now. You see me on First at Four on occasion, and you might hear me on Happy Radio. Where can where do we know you from, Andy? Do we know you? No, you don't really know me. First at Four, Angry Andy, make appearances. Yeah. Usually don't show my face, but yeah, here, here I am now. Yeah, so he is one of my co-workers. You kind of work behind the scenes. You do a lot of technical stuff. So we're going to start the podcast off with something called Photo Dump. So this is something I saw on social media where like long distance friends share photo dumps once a week to kind of check in. Because you know you're busy, you don't have time to talk all the time. So this is just a way to get to know us and, you know, photo dump. All right, let's get into it. So. This weekend, I went to the Erie Humane Society Rock and Rescue concert. Uh, Tyler Barr was headlining, and I got to interview him for First at Four. So it was a great time. It was obviously for a great cause, the Shelter to Children's mm-hmm. Program. And I got my nails done, and I convinced my boyfriend, Andy, to get a pedicure. Oh. Have you ever gotten a pedicure? I have not gotten a pedicure, but I think I would be due to have one by a few years. So I, I'm definitely, if, you, if you'd like to pay for my pedicure, I would. Okay, okay, yeah. So we went to Nail Creations. It's owned by Na, who comes on first at four uh, to cook. She owns Saigon Night, so she owns two different businesses. And I took him, we did the deluxe pedicure. So you got like, a mask for your feet. I didn't know those were a thing. And then they did hot stones on your legs and like a body scrub, all this stuff. I, I don't know how to feel about the mask on your feet. I mean, we, it went all the way up to my, COVID, my, so right under like my knee. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Very funny. Well, so like it was like your face mask? I, I've done a face mask once and I didn't feel any different after I did it. Well, I don't think you're supposed <laughs> You're not going to feel different immediately. I thought you're supposed to feel like tingling and everything. I didn't feel like Well, tingling, it. it depends on the mask. So like, was it a foaming mask? This was like three years ago and I didn't want to do it. So <laughs> I tried it and I was like, all right, we can cross that off the list, I guess. There's nothing that I gained from that. See, I'm a self-care girly. I do all the face masks. I do the eye, the eye mask, and then uh-huh. I get my nails done like once a month. Um, I don't really get my toes done very often, but I'm going on vacation next week, uh-huh. so it's like, I think it's a treat. Okay. Have you heard? Like, do you have a little treat? Just treat yourself? Is that yes, it? okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll let it fly. So let's get into your photo dump, get to know Andy a little bit. Where are we looking at? That's me and uh, Ethan Kibbe. Oh, that's Orange Cassidy. Yeah, these are going to go back. That was my debut on the Blue Couches. Yeah. Who's Orange Cassidy for people who maybe don't know? Uh, he's a wrestler, um, big wrestling fan, and uh, came in one day to work, and I was like, Orange Cassidy's coming in? And <laughs> nobody seemed to know who that was, and I got thrown down. He was really nice. Oh, yeah, he's a very nice guy. Like, very laid back, and that was great. Cause, okay, so his name isn't Orange, correct? Like, his, his legal name. I have no idea what his legal name is. I, I probably I, wouldn't call him by his legal name. Well, so I think that we had his legal name on the sheet, and I asked oh. him, should I call you, like, blank, whatever this was, yeah. or orange, and he's like, well, I'm Orange Cassidy. Yeah, like, that's uh, like, his name. Yeah. Why, why would you call him that? He's like, this is this is where we are, and I'm, I'm here. Like, he was yeah. ready. Okay, so big wrestling fan, like WWE. AEW. AEW, which is what he does, yeah, right? That's okay. what he does. What's the difference? Uh, it's just an alternative. Uh, WWE didn't really have anybody compete with the past, I don't know, 10, 20 years, and something new to watch and I think it's more edgy so oh, it's okay. like edgy. more PG route but they're saying since Netflix now has the rights to WWE starting next year that it'll uh, be more edgy as well. Alright we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Browns fan. Yeah so that's what I did over the weekend was go to Browns preseason game uh, me and my dad have been season ticket holders for going on I believe seven years so um, that's basically I say all I need is 18 Sundays of being left alone, and I'll be fine. And <laughs> I'm totally good after that, but just don't interrupt my Sunday their football season. Okay, so I've never been to a pro, like an NFL game. I was gonna say professional football, like mm-hmm. only college. What's the difference between a preseason game and a regular season game? Uh, preseason games are more the people that don't really have the. Uh, it's it's more just people coming there with their families and getting the experience. Uh, regular season, you have the absolute diehards and everything like that, where it gets pretty rowdy. You, know, you have people tailgating, uh, lining up to tailgate. Sometimes week one, they'll be lining up overnight to well, get obviously, in the parking lot yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, was it a full stadium? 
No, oh. it, usually you're lucky if you get half the speed of the roads. Okay. But I mean, week one will be, especially against the Cowboys, it will be, the tickets already uh, resell or going for about 900 bucks just for one ticket, so. For, for like, a, a regular season? Yeah, week one, yeah. Wow, so it's kind of like concert tickets, where they like resell them and stuff? Yeah, that's, I mean, okay. it, the past years, you know, you couldn't get much for a Cleveland Browns ticket, and then now it's <clears throat> it's completely different with expectations, and also when you play the Cowboys on prime time, it gives that extra extra boost to for profit. My dad would like to sell and see <laughs> the money, but I refuse to do that since I'm the one paying. Right. Tickets. Well, and you also you love them. Yeah, I mean, that's, like I said, give me, give me 18 Sundays by myself <laughs> watching the games, and I'll be fine, and I won't be grumpy. So. See, okay, so I'm not a big NFL fan, I, but I am an Eagles fan. What I like college football. I, I, I know it's all the same, I guess, but I don't know. The, I mean, you have the campuses with all the rowdy college goers yeah. and everything, and you know, I don't believe you can have alcohol in the stadiums. Um, it, yeah. I, I don't think there's alcohol. It depends. Like, the Penn State, State, they, they can, just, yeah. uh, they okay. play this on student stuff. Virginia Tech, I'm not sure. Is that only, yeah, stu- I'm only students. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. I could be wrong, though, but, um, yeah, you have your traditions and everything like that, and you know, NFL goes and waves of traditions. So yeah, I mean, I get because like people are so diehard. Like this is my city, this is my team. I felt that way for like my school. Yeah, I I I, I, mean, I love the city of Philadelphia. Don't get me wrong, yeah. it's amazing, mm-hmm. and I love the Eagles. But uh, you won't catch me watching them on Sunday, especially now that Casey Kelsey's retired. Like, yeah. I adore that man. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Taylor <laughs> Swift here soon. I'll get into my... We are. Okay, wait. Travis so let's, let's move on to Taylor Swift. So our next topic, we're going to talk about Taylor Swift's Eras tour because it is returning to London. Can you hit that side of the screen? Like, yeah, right there. Double tap it. Beautiful. Okay. So um, last weekend, Taylor Swift's tour in Vienna, Austria was canceled due to a foiled terror plot. Um, and so this is the fans here, they kind of gathered, they were singing and everything, but she is coming back to Wembley Stadium for August 16th through the 20th. So she's doing four shows and things are different this time around. So you're a Taylor Swift fan, let's start with that. Yeah, I've seen Taylor Swift uh, five, five times? Yeah, I've seen Taylor Swift okay. five times. What, what tours, name them? Uh, Red Tour, uh, 1989. And these are these are good toys to go to. <laughs> so, these are really good ones. Yeah, I've I've seen that and um I think I think all three of them I had like early entry access to all three of them. So uh people for that even were lining up hours before. Wow. Um <clears throat> even though we would get in like an hour before doors would yeah. open. So um yeah, I mean I I've been to a lot of concerts and I never noticed anything security wise that was a bit different. I will say when I was in the pit during the reputation tour, there was a lot more yellow team security up yeah. front, um, and you could tell there was her own security just pacing back yeah. and forth of where she was going. So I would assume I haven't been to this tour, so I would assume it's even more. A crazy. lot of security. So it's different in Europe compared to the U.S. Obviously, things are just different. Um, with the U.S. tour, I have seen a lot of fans where they'll see videos from the European tour and they're like, wow, like, you guys, the lines, like, getting in is so different. And I mean, it all depends on every stadium. But since this, fans are upset because she's coming back to Wembley. She had already done about four shows there um, previously back in June, I believe. And now people's tickets are getting switched. So maybe you were in one section and now you're moved to a completely different one. It hasn't said if there were sections, but people were curious if it was for security reasons, but there's been statements that come out that said that it's just because of the show, because of vision obstruction, and they want everyone to see. So fans are kind of like, what is, because if it's security, they're like, that's totally fine. Yeah. If it's obstruction, they're also okay with it, but I think they're confused because she had already performed in Wembley. Mm-hmm. So they're like, what, why didn't you do it the first time? I think, if you're somebody that has a ticket and purchased for that seat, you should be able to give them the option of, you know, it, the option of getting your money back yeah. or being able to still go. I agree. I think that's the way to handle it. I don't know if that is how they're handling it, but 
people, from what I was seeing in posts, and you obviously have to take all of that with a grain of salt, I did do a little bit of reading, but they were saying that they were just getting notifications from Ticketmaster, essentially being like, hey, update your seat, what has changed? Um, I agree though, like, I, I would want the option, like, is it a better seat? That I think is yeah. the biggest question. Is it a better seat or is it a worse seat? Mm. Because some people are saying that they were in section 102, maybe, and now they're moved to 204. Is that better? Is that worse? Like, if they're, because the views are, like, people take the errors for so seriously. Where you sit, you know, that determines what you see, what angles, um, if she can see you or not. So I think that they, like, take their seat selection quite seriously. So I can understand fans being upset. Uh, now that we're talking about this, I just remembered, I went to a show in Columbus um, at their arena. I can't remember what their arena mm-hmm. was called. I did see Toast up there, but this was a different yeah. show. Um, they kind of pulled a similar situation that like, we didn't know until we got there. Uh. They closed off the upper deck. Um, like It was like the second, there's three decks in yeah. the second deck. And uh, they closed that off and they were giving people exchanges for their tickets. And you went from being first row on the second deck to having to sit all the way in the back because those tickets were sold. So the artists wanted more people to show there was a bigger crowd yeah. rather than that. So I thought that was pretty messed up, uh, especially because you paid for that and didn't know until you walked Until you the got door. there. Like, that's not, you're not going to leave until you're there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I just think it's best if you give them the option. Yeah, no, I... I don't know. What do you think about, because we were just watching video footage of our as fans, and it made me think too, like, what do you think about people taking their phones into concerts? Because I know some musicians now are, like, getting phones, like, locked up, what, and people live stream for a full three-hour show. Yeah. Like, what, how, what are your thoughts on that? I'm fine with it for, personally, I don't, it's very rare that I videotape when I'm at a show yeah. or anything. I just want to feel the vibe and everything while I'm there, but... Comedians, I totally understand why putting the phones away, they're doing the yeah. same act every time. If that gets leaked, then why are we, and why am I gonna go see yeah. them? A concert's completely different, I think, because you get that kind of more of an escape where you don't really have to focus as much as a comedy show. Yeah. Where you're, you're kind of, you know what's coming and the song and everything like that. And it's online that you can see the set list. So it's part of the reason why I didn't go to the last, the Eras tour is because I didn't care for the set list. So. She changed it. What was that? She changed it. Oh, she did change the stuff? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I don't think I'm going to be going overseas. Well, yeah. Well, she's coming back to the States. I didn't know that either. Yes. So she is coming back to the States. I don't have the exact dates off the top of my head, but I know that it ends in America in December. Okay. Well, I think she's coming back uh, this neck of the woods. We'll talk. We'll okay. Talk. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's ex- it's expensive as well. Like, if it's, yeah. and then people are live streaming it, like, I've seen like the whole concert from just TikTok videos. It's a great show. I feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. But I, I am a fan, but I think it's like a different, different level of fan. And so, if you're somebody that's never been to a concert, I think it's a different story. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm just watching on my phone. I got the full feel of it. But when you are there and you see everything going on and you get that visual, because if you take a picture on your phone, it seems like you're a lot farther away. Yeah. So if somebody's streaming it, and you're actually there it seems like you're a lot closer and you're feeling that you're feeling the bass hitting you and everything yeah. like that so for an experience i think she's one of the best i've seen in concert i've been to a lot of concerts just from the production that's put into it rather than um like she does great singing yeah. live and everything but i've never been to a show that has so much production value. she's a performer yeah, yeah. no you're the end that's gonna love you taylor <laughs> swift fan like brown fan i think that's a good thing yeah. so <laughs> She's been around for a long time as well. But you know who else has been around for a long time? I don't know. No, you don't. Miley Cyrus. Okay. So, <laughs> tap that corner again, double tap it for me. But all the way corner. A little more, see? There you there go. You go. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have to do it on the inside. I can do it on the inside. Yeah, there okay, here, I'll get it in the center. Next time, <laughs> we'll switch seats. Okay. Um, so Miley Cyrus, so she was recently inducted into the Disney Disney Legends. This is on your second page. We're going a little bit out of order here, but it's okay. So she is the youngest Disney Legend. She's 32 years old, and she says she's proud to be Hannah Montana. This happened over the weekend. Did you watch Hannah? You probably didn't watch Hannah Montana. I did watch Hannah Montana. You did? My grandmother had the biggest crush 
on uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh my God. She went and saw Billy Ray Cyrus so many times. Uh, one of my first gifts when I was born was an autographed Billy Ray Cyrus shirt. Really? So when I remember, I can like really remember where we were when the first Hannah Montana came out because I was staying over her house that night and I said, oh, Hannah Montana's coming on with Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. She's like, we, we were at the park. She's like, we got to get back in time. I'm like, okay. Doesn't come on for a couple hours. Like, no, we gotta be ready. So she watched it, and uh, I think that was like the first time she had seen him in a while. She's like, oh, he looks like a hippie now, and everything like that. She so see him. Um, I actually did. There was a lot of I think I don't remember how old I was, but my sister was pretty young, and she watched a lot of Hannah Montana. And I remember when Hannah Montana had her like debut concert before the show actually started. Yeah. I remember seeing that and everything. So it's kind of crazy. Um, that I still can like remember some songs. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Like, which which one? Which one? Best of both worlds. Okay, that's yeah. a great one. That's a great one. Yeah, the best one. I think everybody can remember that. And I remember like when it was ending and she was getting ready to release and uh, she was getting away from the whole Hannah Montana thing. Yeah. But she yeah. talked about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy how her life has gone because uh, seeing like I don't know, ten years ago she was out of control. Like it was, she was breaking the internet for just being out of control. Yeah. Now she seems like she's back on a good path and everything like that yeah so. well so it, that's pretty accurate she is back on a good path yeah. and that's part of the reason that she was kind of inducted to the disney legends it's basically like the hall of fame but for disney yeah. kids obviously mm -hmm. pretty self-explanatory i think and she's been kind of i don't want to say cleaning up her image because i personally like i like the bangers era where she was in that like crazy wild yeah. like my parents didn't like it yeah, but no. i thought she was <laughs> awesome you know what i mean um but I, she's been Growing up, she's in her 30s, and she's talked a lot about how she feels like she's really grown as a person. And like, she she joked that she was like, "Thanks for like sticking with me even during like." Okay, so the joke is that Disney kids were grown in a lab, right? Because they're they're all beautiful. They can all sing. They can all dance. Like, they're awesome. So she joked that if she was made in a lab, she must have not functioned because during 2013, yeah. or like 2016, she was off the rails. Um, but so she joked about it a little bit, but I think that like everybody had that era, you know? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really think about it until you said that, but a lot of the people who grew up watching really have kept going. It's yeah. not like they just stopped as kids. And it, it's kind of crazy of thinking of all the people that have been on Disney. When we were talking about this, I'm trying to think of like who's going to be next to get inducted to Disney. You know, yeah. obviously Zac Efron will probably be one Ooh. if he hasn't been already. Yeah. No, okay, so because she's the youngest. Okay. So, so she is the first one from that era, that yeah. generation of Disney kids, to be in this. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm trying to think of others that. I'm trying not to get Nickelodeon and uh, <laughs> Disney mixed Sweet up. Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato. Um, Raven Simone. Raven, I forgot about her. There's a lot of that sort of Raven watched in our house. I mean, even Lindsay Lohan, I, I think, could maybe qualify because uh, The Parent Trap, uh, Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday, I remember seeing that in theaters. They're making too. a second one. Yeah, I did see that, yeah. yes. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of weird because you don't really think about, like, oh, we're getting older and yes. now people we grew up watching are getting inducted like this. Yeah. You kind of, like, step back and you're like, what have they really been doing the last yeah. 20 years, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, no, it's crazy. I, mean, I feel like that's in things too, because like, I'm post-college, post-high school, and like my friends are married and they're having yeah. kids, and I always said that I would, mm -hmm. and so then it's like, I had a friend, she's so sweet, and I'm not, and nothing against her, I was asking her how her engagement was going, like how the wedding planning was going, and uh, we've been dating our significant others for the same amount of time, mm -hmm. and so she's like, when are you getting engaged? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm doing a lot, I think, like, I yeah. mean, but I, no harm at all, it's all okay, but sometimes, like, I think about that, but I think the grass is greener and everybody's lawn, you know? I mean, if there's no, if there's no, like, negatives going on, I mean, it seems like life's just going pretty smoothly, yeah. you don't really have to think about, like, man, what have I really been doing? You yeah. You've been enjoying life, so. Well, and for her, too, like, you brought up her dad, so there's a lot of controversy surrounding him right now. Uh, they're not on speaking terms. She at the Grammys, like, didn't thank him. Yeah. She definitely did not thank him over the weekend. Um, that, like, his, like, voice recording and him saying some nasty things about her came out. But, like, right, she, she hasn't addressed it at all. She's not dissing him. Even, like, when she did her Vanity Fair interviews, like, she was like, yeah, my dad was there a lot, like, da 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 But, like, I, I, I think the Bangers era would have totally dragged him through the mud. And I think that's just not, like, maturity, like, you're seeing that. I mean, you have to give him credit at least because it, 
without his name and recognition, what's the odds that she would have been able to get in front yeah. of somebody and see her talent? Yeah. And another story about my grandmother is she mm -hmm. remembered Billy Ray would bring her out on stage when she was just little really? singing. So that was another thing I just remembered was that she, I think she has pictures uh, from a film camera yeah. of him and Billy, or her and Billy Ray singing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel as much as she may not be on speed with Carrie, you still got to give them a lot of credit. Yeah. And that's kind of what she said. Yeah. No, I want my mullet back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. So let's talk about some other legends. You want to tap that little side again. The Olympics wrapped up on Sunday, and there was a lot of legends. The USA being one of them. Obviously, we did really well in the, the medal count. Um, the gold medals. Obviously, we have great legends like some old Biles here. Did you watch the Olympics, Andy? Um, so, funny thing, I. When I, I've been doing physical therapy for surgery I just had, and one of the things is I have to do a lot of balancing on one leg. Yeah. So while I was doing that, I had to put a pillow on the ground and I had to stand on my right leg and stand on a pillow. And I'm watching the gymnastics while I'm doing mm -hmm. that, and I can hardly balance on my one leg, and they're doing flips on a balance beam and everything like that. It was just like, it, it was just uh, very crazy to watch, and who would have thought like somebody that's 410 or 411, like Simone Biles would be one of the greatest athletes of American history with all the gold medals she's won. You always hear about, oh, I got bigger, faster, and stronger. Yeah. She's lazy lack of talent, yeah. Olympia champ. Like, she to me, like, I, so I'm a former like, student athlete. She is so inspiring. Like, I mean, as a short, <laughs> yeah. as a short she's person. She's huge on the short community. Yeah. And so, like, I did uh, track and field in high school. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I hurdled. Did you know oh, that? No, I didn't. Okay. So I hurdled. Uh, the hurdles, I'm five on a good day, is what I like to say. Um, so the hurdles went up to my hips yeah. just about, okay? Um, that was the girls' hurdles. And I had a coach. Uh, he called me Bumblebee, and he said, you're Bumblebee because they say bees aren't supposed to fly because their little wings and their big body, which the mass, which doesn't make sense. And he's like, you're too little to jump with these, but you're gonna, like, you're doing it. And I loved it. It was so fun, and I always felt really like, oh, like, I'm short, and I can be, like, special. So, like, I can, like, seeing stuff like that always made me feel good, too. And then just as a woman, to mm -hmm. see her and to boast about it, too, mm -hmm. I think is, like, awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's... Like he's saying, and I don't know, it's kind of crazy because this year, like, I found out, like, all of Michael Phelps' records have been broken, and I remember watching that. Really? Yeah, like, all his records have been broken, and it's kind of crazy, like, we hear, we'll never see something like this again, but we yeah. never thought we'd see anything like Michael Phelps again. That's true. And it didn't take super long for those to be broken, so, I mean, it's crazy we're watching now, but it seems like yeah. people just keep getting that bigger, faster, and stronger. Well, let's talk about another legend. Tap this. This is still Olympic related. You're the best. Snoop Dogg. I love Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, if I actually saw him uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, I, I love Snoop Dogg. And so I love that he did the Olympic torch. Um, I love that he performed in LA to welcome the next games, the next summer games, I should say, to Los Angeles. Um, him throughout the Olympics, like, that's why I watched. I, I okay, then you'll be able to answer this question. Okay. Since when did like Snoop Dogg? It seems like in the past like four years. When has he become like a spokesperson for America? Okay. Like, it, it's just, we, I okay. don't understand what all the hype is around Snoop Dogg. This is so funny. Okay, so I have liked Snoop Dogg for like the longest. No reason. Well, like he's just like swaggy, you know. So, um, so. He, he was just always awesome. Then, you know, you listen to your parents, listen to him, and like, eh, you know, I don't, I don't want to like him. But he's gotten older, and he's gotten into so many random things. Yeah. So I really fell in love with him when he started doing everything with Martha Stewart. Uh, their big lighter ads are hilarious. Um, I don't know. So that, I think, was his entry into, I don't want to say going soft, because I don't think he's soft. Like, he's gangster for life. Mm -hmm. But, like, going into um, something that your, your grandma would probably like. And so now, like, that I saw someone at the Olympics say, when did Snoop Dogg go from gangster rapper to America's grandpa? Yeah, he's, he's basically one of the best marketers right now. Yeah. DJ Khaled. Like, yeah, I hate DJ Khaled. Oh, Hot see, I, I don't understand the huge hype around either of them, but they just keep sticking around. No. They're, everybody knows them, though. Let me, let me tell you something. I love Snoop Dogg, and I say this so platonically. I, like, not romantically, but I love this man. And I think it's just because he's authentic. 
I, he's very likable. She's likeable. not, all of this is not, it's not an act. Like, this mm. is him. This yeah. is, like, who he is. He loves the people. Like, do you know uh, a Bob Doggy land? No. Okay. So, Snoop Doggy is a grandpa. Like, he is genuinely a grandpa. And he has grandkids. And he made a whole children's television show called Doggy Land. Okay, um, I hear about that. And yeah. there's music in it. And one of the songs I actually listen to is the affirmation song. But, like, he loves his grandkids so much that he made a whole TV show for it. Like, that's so genuine. And he let everybody watch it. I love the affirmation song. <laughs> Can you sing it? Affirmation. And then, like, it's, I can't sing it. We're going to get copyright, but I'll that's play true. it later. Good. I'll play okay. it for you later. But it starts with affirmation. And then he, like, he tells you good things about yourself. It's great. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> that's all just about that. But so, like, since he was so involved in the Paris Olympics, like, I, I hope he's very oh, involved. Yeah, especially I think, if he I hope he qualifies, because he ran in the qualifiers this year. He did decently well for his age, he said. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but, well, it'll be, I think, it'll be a couple years later, so I don't know. It'll be yeah, I was going to say, the, again, but. it's going to be fun to see her, you know, compete in the deck you still keep up and uh, some miles. Yeah. Is she gonna, I would assume she's still going to do it, but, I mean, Four years, who knows what can happen. When he's, and she's dealt with a lot of injuries too, so the question she's is like, how long do you push question. it? Yeah, she was, I know. Yeah. But like, how long do you keep pushing it? Yeah. Kind of thing. But like, that's how athletes are. Yeah. Also, um, I hope the LA Olympics don't go deep in like the Paris Olympics. I think that the LA Olympics were like, you would expect that, but um, a lot of the athletes complained about it. I but, so yeah, so it was, it was a mostly vegan uh, menu in the Olympic Village. There was some protein. I did hear that it went very fast because it was so limited and they were having issues with that. But I mean, they're athletes. Protein is like, pro protein carbs, theory. I feel like that's part of your job, though, is, you know, you're athletic. Like, they, people don't understand how much they study what gets put in their yeah. body and how close, pay attention. Just how much anxiety goes into them just eating something because they don't know what's in it. And yeah. I think that's probably why there's a lot of anger behind it is, you know, they stuck to these certain diets for this long time and now they're doing Yeah, it. yeah, no, I would be frustrated too. Yeah. But the Olympics, they're over. It's, it's kind of sad, but don't worry. They're coming back to the States soon. Mm -hmm. I expect ticket sales to be like crazy, crazy yeah. for that. Um, so Los Angeles and then the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Utah, I, I live there. Oh, I've yeah. been to the, where they host the Olympics. Mm -hmm. It's like insane, like it's beautiful. Like, you, you know like those snow globes? Yeah. It's like a snow globe. Huh. Yeah, like the, um, so it's in Salt Lake, obviously, and it's in this like small little town in Sarasota, so like shops around there, like are very snow globe-esque, like old town kind of vibe. It's beautiful, like Utah was beautiful. I, I love like all that. So I think the Olympics, like being back in America and showing just how, you know, we're so, so beautiful because like, you know, who comes to, everyone goes to LA, who goes to Salt Lake City, yeah, Utah, exactly. who goes to New Jersey where the World Cup is going to be, like, that, that's kind of exciting to yeah. kind of showcase these different parts of the United States. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot going on in the next yeah. few years in the United States, yeah, that's for sure. That is for sure. So we were kind of talking about Snoop Dogg, who is a rapper, and I want to talk about another rapper who is kind of changing things up. Well, you want to hit that one? This is the last time you're going to have to hit it. Um, okay, post. Malone, another rapper that I, I do adore. So he is coming out with an album. Um, it is called F1 Trillion, and he's released several uh, singles. This is the full track list, but we'll get into that. But it's a country album, which is a very different than his, um, I want to say rap, rock, I don't know, hip hop would maybe be the right word. What, what would you classify him as? Um, when he first came on the scene, it was definitely rap. Yeah. And then it seems like him and Machine Gun Kelly are yes. having this battle of who can do the most genres. Yes. Um, and well, Machine Gun Kelly got kicked out of rap a little bit. Eminem did on. Um, well, I think that was the best so thing, I at least for me, because I like the yeah. alternative rock stuff a lot better. I do too. Um, yeah. But yeah, one of my friends, uh, he's a touring musician in Nashville, and he, I met him for lunch about two or three months ago, and I was asking him what's going on yeah. in the world of Nashville, and he's like, oh, Post Malone and. Machine Gun Kelly are going country. I'm like, yeah. you're messing with me. He's like, no, no. And literally a week or two after it happened, like it started to come in news that I couldn't yeah. believe it. Well, so Machine Gun Kelly, he recorded like a studio session from Nashville. It's on mm -hmm. Spotify. It's really, really good. And then he did Lonely Road, uh, like Jelly Roll, mm -hmm. which is like country road, but yeah. it's, it's really 
really good too. It's hard to, at first I was just like, not the really country world, it was you know, different. But I, I think it's so interesting that these rappers um, are going into country because country is kind of a hated genre. I think it's a lot simpler genre though. I think in order of writing, um, yeah. I think it's a lot easier to, not a lot easier, but I mean, you hear a lot of big hits from country music and it's kind of stayed the same throughout its time where rap, you know, you have your M&Ms and stuff like that, DMX, and oh. there's been waves of how rap's been uh, sounding where country's kind of been more steady, so. Yeah, I think country has entered a little bit more of a pop era um, mm -hmm. too, which is why I think that some of these musicians are gonna be going out, like Beyonce, um, Machine and Kelly, even though he was like that alternative rock, rock he was kind of pop post malone yeah. has some pop songs uh quavo did a country song with lana del rey um it's called tough it's really good actually but i just think it's interesting because like you're not wrong it's easy to write about like let's talk about his i had some help pour me a drink i have a guy for that okay pour me a drink song about alcohol um i had some help also about a girl and alcohol and that's what everyone says country songs are about yeah. a girl beer or a truck it's really enough yeah. today <laughs> It's pretty relatable. I mean, so, it, a lot of people relate to that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think we can all say that country music has probably the biggest following out of any other genre. Do you think so? I, I think so. I mean, in the last probably 20, 30 years, yeah, I'd say rock kind of took over. Yeah. Uh, I would say pop. Like, but pop is so, I think it covers a lot, like way too many things. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Yeah. But, so, he has so many features on his album, too. Like, it's mm. not really, like, uh, to me, it doesn't feel like a Post Malone album. It feels like a feature album, which is fine. Yeah. So, like, I had some help with, like, Morgan Wallen, Pour Me a Drink, Blake Shelton. I had a guy for that. And Combs, he has, like, Dolly Parton. Like, anybody that you could think of, like, Jelly Roll, like, he got him. Which is cool. Beyonce, mm. she had features on her, like, Dolly Parton, Miley Cyrus, things like that. I just like I, I just think it's interesting because again like anytime I tell someone like I love country music they're mm -hmm. like ill. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to see like how radio stations and stuff like obviously Post Malone's always on like the pop stations and stuff yeah. like that. Well, if this is gonna be all country, is he still gonna be on the pop stations? Like um, I mean, that's how's heard, it gonna work? I heard I had some help on Happy. Oh, okay. I have heard it playing. I've heard Morgan Happy. Wallen on Happy. Um, yeah, because again like it. it it's upbeat. It's it's all upbeat. Like a lot of country music is in three four times compared to like most music is in like that regular four four. Or they'll switch it up. Like I think it just depends on the station. It's different. Yeah. Um, and so it's still it's very upbeat the way that pop is upbeat. So I think that you can get away with playing it on a station like mm -hmm. a pop station because it is so. A lot of them are happy. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very sad, but a lot of them are yeah. happy. I and I I love country music for a long time. Like I. So I originally lived in North Carolina. This is like where I already lived, Utah, North Carolina. Um, and so like, I'm so, so Southern. Like I do have a slight Southern accent. Um, it's not, it's, I can turn it off and on, I feel like. But like, I, and I grew up down there, country music was the only music. Mm -hmm. I didn't know like that was what we listened to. So being exposed to all these other genres, like it was awesome. Like I love that music, I love pop music. But seeing everything kind of circle to country, like yeah. seeing musicians I love do country, I, I kind of like it. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, I mean, if I would have told you five years ago, Post Malone's going to drop a country yeah. album, would you be believe that? No, Nobody would not. believe it. So, so. <laughs> it, it's fun to, I, it's better experimenting and it turning out good yeah. rather than being like, what is this? Yeah. Why, why would you have done that? And it seemed like everything's been towards the positive yeah. for that. So. Have you listened to any of the three singles that I knew? Morgan Wallen's song okay. uh, that he does with him, and then I think I listened to the Jelly Roll one okay. like, maybe once or twice. So what did you think? Did you like the Morgan Wallen one? I like the Morgan Wallen one. I think uh, the Jelly Roll one. I think what I saw mostly was him like behind the scenes doing the um, thing with Jelly Roll. Okay, this is, this is what I wanted to kind of talk about because I think that his singles with like, I think the album's been amazing. The singles, I've liked every single one of them. Mm -hmm. I think they're awesome. But I think that, like, Post Malone, to me, it doesn't feel like a Post Malone song. Like, this is more of a long song. Yeah. I think he's putting himself in the back seat a little bit too much. But again, I haven't heard the whole album. It comes out on Friday, August 16th. Um, 
So we'll see if he puts himself a little bit more at the forefront. Because some of them, they're not all featured. I do think he has two solo songs. And it's interesting that he's doing all features, well, besides the two solo songs, but I mean, Taylor Swift's first single was with Post Malone. Yes, so I mean, yes. it, it's interesting that he's doing all these features and kind of just experimenting with other artists. Yeah. And that's probably how he got to this point, was just hanging out with other artists. And yeah. Picking their brains and being like, oh, I should try this out. This is a big year for them too, in terms of like that being that on that single with Taylor Swift was like a big deal. But like, I, I think it exposes him to a whole new fan base. So like, oh, yeah. if this is, I think this is the time to do something different because I mean, I guess if you have this whole new fan base, they don't have these past expectations of you. So you're like, look, I do have this, and now I have this. Like, yeah. thanks for getting to know me, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, being on his single, the single with Taylor Swift, I mean, you can't get in front of a bigger fan base than that. Yeah. Usually, so. yeah. And I and I just love him. He's a dad. Uh, I don't even know this. Uh, but so, I, <laughs> this is probably a couple years old now. Um, I'll see if I can find it in the deep archives of the internet. But he was performing, and uh, he had just had a baby, like, not too long ago, maybe like a year at that point. And this girl was in the front, she was a mom, and she had her baby on her pop socket like a, a picture of her baby on the pop socket and he came over and they like did a selfie while he was on stage and I was like, is that your kid? Are you like, mom? She's like, yeah. She's like, what should you do? I'm like, I got one for my baby. Like, I, like, that's just so cute. Like, I thought that story was heading to a uh, Flo Rider situation. <laughs> so great here. No, actually, um, t it's Tuesday today, just full disclosure, it's, it's Tuesday and I was at 8th grade Tuesday tonight and I'm up there and MK Fisher is performing. She's an Erie native who moved to Nashville. She's doing, she's a country singer. She's doing a lot of covers tonight, great. Um, but I'm up there and I'm getting nice and close to take a picture of her. And there's a mom and a little baby dancing. The baby had full protective gear that was different than the Flo Rida situation. <laughs> full headphones, not like up close or anything, but they were like dancing like mom and baby. And I was like, that's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah, I mean, it's all their year this weekend. Yeah, yes, it is this weekend, is. so I mean, it's gonna be yeah, eight great Tuesdays, and then you have three more, more extra days. Yeah. yeah. So for for celebrate Erie, we have Jimmy Eat World. Yeah, that was, um, I'm not gonna be here for Jimmy Eat World. Really? I'm really bummed. I, when it got announced, I blew up everybody's phone. Like Jimmy Eat World's coming, and then I just started singing, and then I like was like, I can't go. That's I, crazy. I'm like gonna be out of town. I'm like. I'm always out of town for celebrate Erie. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I've never seen Jimmy Eat World. I'm like really pumped for this. Yeah. And then literally two hours after being on the biggest music high I've been in a long time, I'm like. That's a bummer. Yeah. That's a bummer. That's how I felt last year for Flo Rida because mm -hmm. I was flying back in from vacation. Oh, okay. I'm like, I just knew it was going to be a show. Yeah. But um, Gabby Barrett is performing this year. She's the last one on Sunday. I really want to see her. She's a country singer. She did I Hope You Cheat. Um, she's very talented. Yeah, I, I, I've heard of her. I don't know any of her music. but I've What's Nancy Day with? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then I think it's uh, One World Tribe and Leaders. Yeah. So it's a good lineup, I yeah. think, personally. Yeah. Leaders is quite popular right now on TikTok. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Teenage Dirtbag song. Have you seen that trend? No, I haven't seen Okay, that. so the trend is um, you, you use the song, and so it's funny. Because oh, wait, yes, I have. Now I've, I've started seeing the song in my head, and I remember seeing this yeah. trend. It was a while ago I saw Yeah, it. a little bit. So they were showing like their younger selves, and then yeah. now, and then the generation that actually grew up with Leaders, so like Gen Z, my generation, was the one that was doing it. Then the generation that grew up with Leaders was stitching it and doing theirs and like, no you're not a teenager about it look and i thought that was like yeah. it's all good fun like life learning but um no i, I thought that was, so it's gonna be a good show this yeah. weekend i'm really excited to do this with you andy so andy like i said at the beginning of the podcast is my co-worker we work together we hang out kind of like towards the end of the day at we work we, yeah we, we do a lot of gossip right we just like let it all out and so like this, this is kind of like that it's really yeah. nice yeah we, we kept it like PG. So, <laughs> yeah. We're talking about a lot. I mean, like, you have the gift of gab. I, I feel like you didn't. I don't have the gift of gab. I just have the gift of, like, getting John Mayak really fired up and uh, throwing random things out there and see if they stick. That's kind of my gift. <laughs> but so that, that was it for this week's episode of Talking Trends Now. You can watch it on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify. You can watch it on EerieNewsNow.com. Home, and you can follow me on social media at arianamoyer.tv and Andy, where can they find you if you want them to find you? Do you want to be found a man of mystery? Yeah, just try looking me up. 
<laughs> Let's make it again. Andy Howe on LinkedIn? Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, if you want to add me on LinkedIn. <laughs> So tell and me then, that you saw this on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah, and then it's Eerie News now on all platforms, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, but thanks, you guys, for watching and or listening. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Sure will.